What's up guys, JV2017 here with another Destiny Tips and Tricks video. And today's video is actually a continuation of my two-part look at the newest Destiny update 1.1 that was released on December 1st, which was two days ago. And so yesterday we looked at exotic weapon changes. There were a ton of buffs, nerfs, and balancing changes. Now we're basically looking at everything else that was done in this update. So Bungie starts us off with an intro saying today's patch includes the long-awaited arrival of exotics weapon buffs, additional acquisition pass for destination upgrade materials, along with additional changes to exotic gear node upgrading in preparation for the soon-to-be-released expansion, The Dark Below. We're also correcting issues induced by our recent update to the raid. So that's pretty much our starting point here. Again, I already covered the exotic weapon changes, so we're gonna cover everything else they just mentioned. So in preparation for the Dark Below, they actually changed the way that we upgrade exotic weapons and armor. So it says, in preparation for the Dark Below, exotic armor and weapons no longer require Ascendant materials to upgrade. You heard that right. Your Ascendant Shards and Ascendant Energy are not going to be used to upgrade exotics anymore. The final upgrade node of all exotic gear will require what's called an Exotic Shard, and it can be found by dismantling unwanted exotics or purchased from Xur for seven strange coins. So you'll only be able to get one by those methods. And exotics now start at a higher base attack value and have a narrower upgrade range to compensate for this change. So. No more upgrading, you know, needing materials until you're at that last upgrade node to get the very best damage out of your exotic weapons. So that's a pretty big change that Bungie made right there. Continuing on with activities, we're starting with the raid. First off, they fixed an issue where three people would not be sent through on the Atheon fight in Vault of Glass during Times Vengeance, or whatever it's called when Atheon sends people through, sometimes it only send two people, and that was pretty much the sole reason sometimes my group of guys could not beat the raid. So I'm glad they fixed that. And they also fixed cheesing the Templar. I'm sure you guys know what that means, where you push him off using grenades. You can't do that anymore, apparently. So no more cheesing. You gotta actually beat the Templar legit. Next up, they kind of, you know, dive into the whole getting materials is easier thing with daily heroics so every time you complete a daily heroic the destination materials will drop so if you're on venus you're gonna get spirit bloom if you're on earth you're gonna get spin metal you guys get the gist there they removed the relic hunter bounty and i'm not sure why they did that maybe it just was redundant or not very good and then they also added that destination material thing for completing daily patrol bounties so that's a nice way to get materials now as well. Next up, we're talking about vendors. So they reduced Cryptarch reputation gains from letting the Cryptarch decrypt your engrams, but now the reward packages have an increased chance for legendary engrams. I was noticing I was not getting legendary engrams from my Cryptarch packages. So basically we're gonna level up slower, but we are gonna have more legendary engrams to compensate for that. So players will now be able to use marks from either vanguard or crucible mode to buy materials all of the materials from either of the quartermasters so it's really cool you can actually take 10 vanguard marks go to the vanguard quartermaster and if you need relic iron you can just take 10 and exchange it for 20 relic iron so it's a pretty sweet deal i'm glad they added that and again it eliminates you know having to go out and farm. Wow, you guys see that on the screen right there? I almost got a six man. That was so close. Anyways, next bullet point, Xur now sells exotic shards. We already covered that for seven strange coins. Faction class items are now replaced by faction emblems whenever you upgrade your faction. So whenever you hit another rank up, you get a package, you will find a emblem instead of a class item. So finally, they talk about technical issues, networking fixes, whatever that means, they're gonna reduce the instance of B family of KTOs, which is kick to orbit errors. So that's good. They also fixed an issue in which using Xbox One party chat induced a slower frame rate. I did read about that, people were complaining, so I'm glad they were able to fix that issue pretty quickly. So anyways, guys, that was kind of a roundup of everything else that was in that update. Kind of a lot of stuff, but uh, let me know what you guys thought about that update. You know, did you like these changes? Uh, is there anything you really, really need to be changed in the next update? 
I'd like to see what you guys have to say. So if you learned something new from this video, remember to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Also, don't forget you can subscribe to my channel if you have not already for more Destiny content coming very soon. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.